Okay, so welcome back to another What I've Watched video. If you've never watched a What I've Watched video, basically I'm just going to tell you what I've been watching the past couple of weeks and a few little thoughts on them if I'd recommend them, yada yada yada. We'll get into this. Oh, and there's a couple that aren't on here. For example, Safe from Mr. Banks, Safety Not Guaranteed, Toy Story of Terror and The Kings of Summer. And they're not in this, I've watched them, but I'm going to do full reviews on them. So keep your eyes peeled for those because they're not in here. Okay, so first, as you saw, I picked up Kick-Ass 2 finally. Woohoo! I also did a review on this, so definitely check that out. It was quite a fun review, I'll link it below. So, uh, because of that, I've also watched Kick-Ass, the first one. So I watched Kick-Ass 2, um, Kick-Ass and Kick-Ass 2 back to back, just to get the full feel. Love Kick-Ass, it was definitely one of my favourites of 2010. I, if you've not seen Kick-Ass, I recommend it, I really enjoyed it. I think Hit Girl steals the show, to be honest. Um, Chloe Grace Moretz, I hope that's how you say her name. Is it Motet? Moret. I don't know how you say her name, I think it's that. I'm sorry if her last name is pronounced wrong, I'm terrible at those kind of things. Anyway, she's awesome in it. This one I did enjoy, but I definitely, definitely still prefer the first one. But you know, I enjoyed it, I'll definitely watch this one again. But yeah, check out my review for more thoughts on Kick-Ass 2. Next up we have Texas Killing Fields, and this actually has Chloe in as well, so which is really cool. It's when she's quite a bit younger. We've basically got these two cops here, and they end up investigating this, like, um, you know, these killing fields in Texas, what are entitled the killing fields. It's kind of in like a rough area. Um, the, the, who is the girl's name? Anyway, Chloe, um, whose name's Anne, is kind of like mistreated a bit in her family. So she kind of hangs around with this cop quite a bit, you know, always there. And she always, he always notices that she's kind of out of the house because her mum kicks her out and stuff to just wander around. And it's kind of a bit weird. She's kind of involved in it more than you would think by the end of the movie. But you know, I really, really enjoyed this. It was quite a good thriller, kind of interesting. You were kind of wondering who the murder was. Basically, these young girls keep getting like murdered and it's not really in their area of field but they decide to go out and try and investigate anyway really really enjoyed this one definitely recommend it if you're into that kind of stuff Mr. Doubtfire I just kind of felt like watching this I've watched this so many times I just love it I mean I don't really need to explain this but if you haven't seen this for any reason just go out and get it it's the, such a good movie I might even do a review on this to do some little fun bits in it but you know Robin Williams is Mrs. Doubtfire you just can't go wrong. I love this movie so much. Hope they don't fall off. Um, Song for Marion, I did a review on this one, so again, I won't talk about it a lot, but I loved this so much, so please check out my review, or just please try to check out the trailer for this. It's really, really good. I highly recommend it. Basil. Yes, Basil the Great Mouse Detective. So happy to have watched this one. It was even better than I remember it. As a kid, I loved this one. Me and my mum used to really like this one. And, you know, it was even better now that I'm older, and it was just... I don't know, Miss Flavishens and the little little mouse girl and all the toy shop and the bat with a peg leg, it was so good. This is definitely an underrated Disney movie, if you haven't seen this one I highly recommend it. It's basically about like a mouse Sherlock Holmes. You can't go wrong, it's so good, honestly definitely check this one out. Um, next one we've got is Half Nelson with Ryan Gosling. Now I really really like Ryan Gosling but he's definitely gotten better in his acting as time has gone by. Uh, I think personally, and I think he's actually gotten more attractive as time has gone by. But anyway, um, Half Nelson is, you know, I mainly picked it up because he was in it, but I also saw the trailer and thought it looked interesting as well. Basically, he is a teacher, and there is this young girl in his class called, oh my god, I literally just watched this movie, what was her name? Uh, her name was kind of a, a strange name, that's why I don't really remember it, but anyway, there's this girl in his class who is having a hard time at home, you know, her dad doesn't really come and see her a lot, her brother is in prison and her mum's always working. So she kind of forms like a, a friendship with this teacher. And he's he's a drug yeah, he is a drug addict. Uh, and so he himself isn't the best role model, but people who she looks up to, he's like, oh no. You know, he's trying to keep her out of trouble, but him himself is also having problems. And a lot goes on in this movie. Like, when I first started watching it, I was like, oh, don't know where this is going to go. It's not really much going on. It's very, very slow burning movie but once it gets you know the last quarter of this movie is great and I was really surprised by it I definitely enjoyed it if you kind of enjoy more of the dramas of I don't know it was very very good but I don't know exactly what to say about it. you know basically you know he's a teacher he's a drug addict he's having a lot of troubles and the young girl is always having a lot of troubles and they kind of form this friendship which is kind of you know it has its ups and downs but she's from like a rough area and um you know, there's a lot that happens that I don't want to give away, but it's definitely a very interesting movie and I'd recommend it if you think that sounds interesting to you. Uh, but yeah, Half Nelson. It also is good as well, it's got quite a lot of, um, you know, kind of like freedom writers. It reminded me a little bit of that, but it's not quite as inspirational. But the little girl, you know, the kids in the class are doing history, he's a history teacher, they're teaching them all about 
uh, a lot of it's like about um, black history and there's some other bits in there but yeah I definitely really really enjoy this one when a man loves a woman with Meg Ryan now I picked this up because it had Meg Ryan in it and this was totally different than I thought it was gonna be um she is you know what are we on a theme with here he was a drug addict she's an alcoholic I don't know what's going on anyway basically she's an alcoholic and has two little daughters and you know she's married to Andy Garcia and it's about basically all the lengths that he will go to help her out and try and keep this relationship going and you know she goes through rehab and all that stuff and it's really really interesting insight and you know it's it's about their life and with these two daughters and what they go through and uh, you know the relationship between the two of these with her problems definitely an interesting movie definitely a lot different than I thought it was going to be but um, it is it ha it's sad it's a sad movie but it has uplifting moments it's an interesting movie I guess it's a I don't even know what kind of movie to call this but it's about the love between these two in the situation they're in which is very interesting so yeah recommend this one I did enjoy it next we have Pleasantville um, my friend Sherry I don't know if you've seen her in any videos you may have has been going on about this movie forever to me she's like oh have you ever seen Pleasantville and I was like no 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 for years now and then I saw it cheap picked it up and I enjoyed it a lot. Basically we've got uh, Tobey Maguire and Reese with Reese Witherspoon and they are two brother and sister and basically Tobey Maguire's character is really obsessed with the show Pleasantville where it's like all everyone's very nice and it's all in black and white it's an old show and basically they get sucked into the TV and are two of the main characters and it's all about them like trying to get out of the TV but also trying to they're like changing a lot in there. It's really really interesting I highly recommend this movie definitely check this one out. If you guys want to see a review on this please just let me know in the comments below or if you want to see a review on anything let me know but if you want to see a review on this one let me know because I really really recommend it and there's a lot more that I could say about it. I really really enjoyed it. We have One Fine Day with Michelle Pfeiffer and George Clooney. Love this one. Recently just talked about it in my Mother's Day video. Um, basically she has she's a single mother of a little girl he's a single father of a little boy and they happen to meet in their struggles of the day and it's about this one day where lots of things go wrong but it's such a feel good movie this is an uplifting movie that makes me feel amazing after I watched it definitely want to watch it again had such a great time watching this it's like a I don't even know what this is it's, like, it's kind of a romantic comedy but it's a bit different it's just very very good it's all taking place in this one single day where they're having struggles with their children and everything that they go through and I loved it so much. We have The Net with Sandra Bullock. This was really interesting. This was definitely different than I thought. Basically she works on the internet doing something. I can't remember. It's a while ago when I saw this one. And um, basically she goes on holiday and she's got this like virus. She gets out viruses from games and stuff. She has this virus on her computer which basically is a leak of some kind of government thing. Uh, and people are then somehow find out about this and try and go after her to steal the uh, dongle, what you call it, USB, uh, with the virus on. They kind of get her and they basically steal her identity and she hasn't got that identity anymore. And it's her struggle to try and get back her identity when no one will believe her. She doesn't know where to turn. The police are kind of turned against her as well. Her mother has Alzheimer's so she can't, like, identify who she is. She can't, you know, um, what's it called? You know, she can't vouch for the fact that she is who she says she is and it's really really interesting really really enjoyed this one I highly recommend it I know it's quite an old one but Sandra Bullock is great in it and it's a really interesting story so definitely check out this if you've never heard of it now we have The Happening yes with Zoe Deschanel and Mark Wahlberg Ugh. Uh, this is weird it's about this like virus where everybody is killing themselves and they're trying to escape it uh, I don't really know it wasn't really that good Monte Carlo with Selena Gomez who um, I'm not the biggest fan of and Leighton Meester who I love she's great but I do like this movie a lot I'm, I used to be a fan of Selena Gomez but no, no not so much anymore so in this movie she's fine though I like her in this um, basically it's kind of the same old story like Prince and Bob type thing she is poor and is saved up to go to Paris and there's a rich one of her who looks the same as her and they swap places well they're not swap places she the rich one leaves and goes somewhere and she takes her place pretty much she just steals her place I've made this sound really terrible but it's that kind of story you've seen it a million times before but I enjoyed this it's a feel-good movie it's set in Paris it's girly it's cute you know if you're that into girly movies you know check this one out I got it mostly because Leighton Meester and also Finn uh, what's his name Corey uh, is also in this next we have Stomp the Yard which is a dance movie about this um, 
boy who has had a lot of trouble in the past where his brother uh, died and he ended up in prison but he now goes to live and go to this like kind of posh boarding kind of school and he really is not sure about it but you know they have the um, like little groups I don't know what they're called faculties if that's the wrong word I don't even know what that is I don't even know uh, and basically they want him the, the two different things want him in their group because he's a really good dancer and they do this stepping thing and they do this competition it's about that but it's a lot more deeper than that it's more than dance uh, I think it had a little bit too much dance in it for my liking but it is a dance movie so what you're gonna expect but I really enjoyed the actual story of his life and his struggles and uh, the reason behind why he's dancing Earth and to his brother that was really interesting more so than the dances for me personally but yeah if it's you like dance movies this is definitely one that I personally really enjoyed Next we've got one that I got recently off a friend of mine, Adam, so thanks so much again Adam, and this is Call of the Wild. I watched this pretty much just after I got it and I really really enjoyed it. Basically it is a husky dog movie but this husky dog is half wolf, half husky dog. This little girl goes out to stay with her grandfather in Montana and she finds this dog, but you know she's kind of like oh I don't want to be here and all that, but then she finds this dog, you know, befriends this dog and they basically are trying to win this sled dogging competition. But you know, I love movies like this. I love movies to snow. I love snow dogs. I love huskies. I love the sled dogging thing. So I really, really enjoyed this. And it was definitely an uplifting, feel good movie. When you start it, it seems a bit mm, And the acting seems a bit like forced at first. But then once the characters seem to get into themselves, it's fine. You don't even notice it. But at the beginning, you're kind of like, ooh. So if you think at the beginning, oh, then definitely give it a chance. It definitely, you know resolves its issues after the first 10 minutes I say and it's a really really great movie but also is the story of Call of the Wild the novel is involved in this so that's really cool as well but yeah so if you haven't seen this one and you like movies like that this is one to check out as well I might be doing a review of that one too and Whale Rider is the final movie this one I really enjoyed basically this little girl is born into a family where it was boys and boys and boys and boys to carry on a tradition her grandfather it kind of shuns her off and always wants her to be a boy and her father has like left her with him um, and it's all about this tribal tradition and that she doesn't fit a part of and she's always felt unfitted out of it but then you know she kind of is always trying to prove to her grandfather that it doesn't matter that she's not a boy and she wants to be a part of this as well and it's actually a really 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 sad story but it's kind of happy you know it's uplifting but sad and it's really really good though I highly recommend this I've not heard anybody else talk about this one so uh, if you think it's something that you'd like, I definitely recommend this one. So yeah, that is what I've watched guys, I hope that's okay, just little summaries because, you know, it takes a long time to go through but I talk about them a long time. Don't forget to thumbs up this video if you want to see more of these and you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't already or if you are new, and I'll see you guys next time, so thanks so much for watching, bye!